for this technical stuff. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of uh, being together and the opportunity to, uh, to worship you both uh, in the room together and also together on Zoom. Lord, as we order our desires to bear witness to the powers of princes of principalities, Lord, to hear you speak deeply into our hearts to encourage us. So I just pray, Lord, that you uh, pour out your Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. And we might truly worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Okay, is uh, is uh, Brian Drucker on? Oh, Brian, come on up. <laughs> and Brian, take your mask off when you speak into the he's microphone. He's on, he's here. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are going to have uh, all together now. Tonight, 6 p.m., in the parking lot here, we are going to have an all-together-now meeting. And Henry Schaefer, one of the pastors at Roots Fellowship, will be the speaker. He told me that he's going to have someone from Roots come and we'd worship. Uh, I, tonight is John 17. We've been going through the Gospel of John. And John 17, if you know, it's the chapter on unity. And I thought Henry's the guy. That's right. Henry brought together men from all the different churches for the Together Men's Bible Study. He's been doing this for years. Unity is on his heart, even as it is on Kyle's. And uh, I invite you to come. And and support this and be a part of praying for the unity of the church in Cashin. Yeah, thanks. And the Lord, so so so. Good. Oh, the location is right here in the parking lot. The Lord's giving us beautiful weather for it. Yeah, yeah. Six o'clock, the sun will be dropping down there. It'll be it's going to be a great time. Real opportunity, everybody, to come out. You know, the viral load, especially you guys at home. The uh, the viral load is real low when the wind is blowing. Uh, you know, wear masks just because it's the thing to do uh, and come out and join us. Uh, also, Thursdays, we're continuing to do uh, to gather at the uh, farmer's uh, market, uh, four o'clock, pass out water, and it's just enjoy good, good fellowship. It really is a great time. We need cases of water. Bring them by. We can give, you can give Scott loads of cash and he can buy water too. Um, and uh, just great fellowship, great way to share Jesus' love in just a very, very uh, practical way. Is there anything else for the good of the church? Yeah, Tony? Okay, we're going to be meet, meeting here. We're going to be on Zoom. We'll be meeting here. So uh, Kingsmen will not be on the 4th, which is the first Saturday. That's when we usually meet. Kingsmen will be on the 11th. And we and we'll be gathering uh, here in person. Okay, we'll not do breakfast, but we will be here for Kingsman. Great. Anything else? All right. You know, it's a one opportunity as we gather to draw near to the Lord. The altar is open. I I invite you to to draw near with open hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Same. 
through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never, never, never fails. The wind is strong and the water is deep. I'm not alone here in these open seas. Your love never fails. Let's try it, Lord. The chasm is far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. You stayed the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night. Joy comes in the morning. That's right. When, when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never, never, never fails. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Just proclaim this. You make all things work together for my good. Yes, you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. One more time. You make all things work together for my good. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night. Joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Oh, those oceans rage. I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Ooh, your love never, never, never fails. Your love
and the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations.
because of what you've done, not because of what I've done. It's just because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading. Here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean. A vapor in the wind. Do you, you hear me when I'm calling? Lord, you catch me when I'm calling. You told me who I am. I am your yes, Lord. I am your I am Let's uh, share in a few moments of silence together. Is there a word from the Lord this morning? Candy, come up. Microphone and take your mask off, Candy, when you speak into the mic. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotta speak right into it. Okay. This is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hold on, you guys. <laughs> I get a little lost sometimes. Technology. When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, it's they who stumble and fall. And though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Amen. Irene, go ahead and un unmute yourself, Irene. Good morning. Good to see everybody, kind of. Um, I'm greatly encouraged this morning. You know, I shared with some people a vision I had about the Lion of Judah, and then the Lord sent the cougar to my door the next, that night. And uh, then a friend sent me a vision that somebody else had, and it was the same vision. And I'm up here on the reservation, which many of you know what that means for me. And I feel the Spirit of God is just um, cleansing the land. And that vision the other person sent me was the lion was blowing out his breath and cleansing and purifying us and the land. So I wanted to read this. It's out of Revelations. And it says, And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And then it skips down. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed the people for God from every tribe and every language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, 
and they shall reign on the earth. So, you know, our God is so powerful and we do not have to walk in fear. And Candy's word is just, it's just so right on with what the Spirit's showing me. And I walk in peace because of him. Amen. 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 Sue, come on up. Yeah, okay. You have to get close to the mic, though. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Shake your head yes. Everybody shake your head yes. Yes, wonderful. Okay. This is John 16, verse 21. A woman, when she's in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish or joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. This is a COVID season. Well, some people are having babies now. Some have just had babies. And um, their life, they'll never understand what we've been through, because we were pre-COVID. They're post or present, however that is. And I just think that um, we don't have to despair of anything because Jesus Christ is on the throne. He rules, he reigns, he's not surprised by anything, and he's in charge. And we serve a very loving God. And we have a lot to rejoice about. Amen. 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 Let's bow our hearts and heads together. Lord, you are the Lion of Judah. Lord, you are the conquering Lamb. And, and, and I, love, I love that vision. Of, of you, Lion of Judah, breathing across the land and purifying it, purifying it, Lord, cleansing it. <clears throat> Lord, we certainly we trust that that, Lord, that vision speaks to the, Lord, the COVID virus. And it's great being in Tehachapi where we got the breeze blown, where the viral load and we're outside is minimal. Lord, and we know the power of the breeze. Uh, Lord, especially your wind that, that blows, Lord, from your breath. Indeed, Lord, your Holy Spirit that cleanses and, and purifies us. Lord, not only, Lord, we trust, uh, you know, the, <clears throat> the world from COVID-19, Lord, but uh, our own hearts, Lord, for many, uh, any sin that remains. And, and again, Lord, uh, uh, the other uh, nation, the culture uh, of the whole world is, Lord, you desire to bring, uh, <clears throat> man, just your, your, your kingdom community of the wonder of your presence uh, in, in the midst of in, in the midst of life. And it's true, Lord, how wonderful it is, how wonderful it is to dwell in your house, to, to be among your people, to walk constantly with you and, and, and to know your, 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 your every concern. Uh, Lord, as it burns our hearts that, that, that we might know how to pray. Lord, that we might lift up our concerns to you, uh, confident that, that you hear us, and, and we can truly rest in peace. Lord, we continue to lift up our nation, indeed the world. Lord, for, uh, with this crazy pandemic, uh, folks were thinking it was going to die down in the summer, and we're seeing that they're ramping up as, as we've kind of reduced the social dis distancing and businesses have, have, have opened up. Lord, make us wise. Lord, make us wise to know, how, Lord, how we are to, uh, Lord, be, Lord, as we social distance, but physically draw close if we're wearing masks or we're gathering outside or, Lord, however that is, Lord, make us wise, uh, Lord, uh, that we might receive everything we need uh, from you uh, through one another. Uh, Lord, Lord, we continue to pray for a nation with, uh, Lord, with the uh, racial uh, injustice. And Lord, uh, Lord, the uh, ec economic uh, desperation, Lord, so many thrown thrown out of work. Uh, Lord, move for your glory, Lord. We we wait on you, Lord, and ask, ask that you would use us. If it's just if it's you know passing out water on uh, during the farmers market, if it's connecting with family uh, and friends, Lord, help help us to speak your wisdom, Lord, to speak your truth. In, in, into people's lives, that there might be peace in this land, Lord, that 
that your righteousness might be revealed in us and through us, or that folks might give their lives to you and discover the life that is life in you. Lord, we know you hear us. We're bold to approach the throne of grace where we pray the prayer you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Chad, put the, pop the prezi up, but we're going to be going into, uh, into our small groups uh, in, in our breakout rooms for, uh, for the folks on Zoom. And what I want you guys to share, and I'll give you, it'll just take about a minute for it to come to your mind, but I want you to share a bit of wisdom or advice that somebody gave you that made all the difference in the world. Piece of wisdom or a bit of advice that someone gave you. Maybe you're going through a you know hard patch. Maybe you're in a marriage or a work situation. Uh, uh, maybe it was a health issue. But a piece of wisdom or advice that someone gave you that has made all the difference uh, in the world. So get. A, it looks like we got about three groups here. So in the, in the sanctuary, let's break break up the three groups and I'll uh, break up the breakout rooms. So. You guys are going to have to unmute yourselves. Um, and they're going to put you into <clears throat> about five participants. Here. Hi, Mickey. Hello. I have a word. That Go helped, for it. That helped me. Um, when Scott and I were dating, my aunt, I was, we were, I was playfully calling him a name. And my aunt later on said, I, I heard you doing that. And she said, you know, you, you're doing it in, in jest right now, but it can deteriorate. And the next thing you know, things become um, serious. And then you're, and then you actually are calling each other names. So stop it right now before any of that stuff continues. So. I thought that was a good word, and and I followed it. And we do not call each other names to this day, or, or argue and shout or any of that kind of stuff. So it was a good word from my auntie. Yeah, yeah. I have a word. Um, I I suffer from being afraid a lot and um, uh, anxiety, and even have sometimes panic attacks. And I had a doctor once who told me to challenge the fear, to say, bring it on, give me all your fear, give it to me as much as you want. And actually that relieved the fear. And I, I believe that's what God wants us to do is challenge the fear and Amen. say, bring it on. Because by advice, but the first piece of wisdom that popped into my mind was, uh, Earlier, growing up in the church, I would hear this idea of peace that surpasses understanding a lot, and everyone would pray for it, everyone would talk about it, and I would some. Then I started praying for it, talking about it, and sometimes I get peace, and sometimes I wouldn't. And I was like, "What's going on, God? Like, why? I thought this would work this way." Uh, and someone pointed out that in Philippians, where that comes from, uh, what it's kind of the precursor to that is being thankful in all situations, uh, and and so 
the advice of you know when going through hard times, uh, if possible, as best as you can, come and approach it in an attitude of thankfulness to God for all the things that you do have, or even for the situation itself. And truly, that has in that moment given me peace that I cannot understand uh, when I approach God with thankfulness in, in those situations. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> You know, not all prayers are supposed to be answered right away. Hmm. I'll share a bit of uh, wisdom, advice. <clears throat> I was working in a, uh, in a desert entry farming operation up in the north northwest corner of uh, Winnemucca. And it was an attorney who, who owned the ranch, and I was there to kind of oversee it while he was do, do, doing other things and he was uh he was there for the harvest and i remember distinctly standing with him standing over the cab of the bank out wagon as we were you know just kind of looking at the sunrise or or whatever we were doing and he asked me what what are you going to do with your life kyle i said well i want to go to law school and he said kyle don't go to law school he was an attorney he says kyle when when the, when you're a lawyer, what, what you deal with is everybody's problems as a last resort. It is, it is not a fun place to be. And the Lord had already been, you know, speaking into my life about, you know, draw, drawing me to, uh, in the ministry. And when, uh, and when Ray said that, it really, it really hit home. You know, yeah, may, maybe I, I, I ought to do something that helps people with their issues before it's a last resort. So, so they never get to a last resort. Hmm. Um, it was really powerful at the time, for sure. Hmm. Someone else. I'm going to go to one more breakout room. Okay. <laughs> I get it just kind of let us all take a deep breath and just kind of kind of diffuse right. a little bit of the hot air. <laughs> but um, I remember um, going to, it was a meeting for um, this 24 <coughs> worship and prayer team. And we were gifted with a speaker uh, from a Catholic church, this nun, she was really, really popular. She had like, years booked in advance of speaking opportunities so she cleared out her calendar to come and speak to us and the wisdom that she gave i wrote down and it stayed with me for so long um and i i, I wish i had it in front of me to, to go down the list of the different things that she shared one of them was how you wake up impacts your whole entire day are you waking up to a blazing horrible sounding alarm <laughs> she said that <laughs> she said that one of the sisters would wake up every morning and start singing like hymns psalms and things spiritual songs and that would be the way that they would all wake up and they would just enjoy the way that their day was started in that way so ever since then i started praying oh another one of the things she said was pray your changes don't just decide to make these big huge changes in your life but pray them so that they're sustained little by little oh that's good and so i started praying about you know lord help me not to have this blazing alarm clock help me help me wake up with you waking me up and little by little the lord did that and it was it was really powerful another wisdom was um be your own anchor of peace and I'll let you guys share. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm changing the video. That's what's going on. Oh. Okay. You got it now, Steve. Sideways. 
<laughs> my picture. No. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Hi. Hi, Jenna. How you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> okay. Gosh. Hey, Brenda. You have birds in your background with your tree. <laughs> I I don't think so. I think somebody else has. <laughs> hey Chad, you gotta uh can you unmute? As we uh continue listening to the Lord through these crazy times in this Boy, all the Bible books in the Bible are powerful, but Philippians has become my latest, greatest uh, for me. Um, so we're picking it up. Uh, Does that mean anything? Philippians 1, 8 through 11, but, but we're going to focus right in at verse. Oh, there it goes. You lost the Prezi? You got it? We can see you now, but the Prezi's not up. Okay, there we go. All right. Let me turn this guy on. So, Philippians 1, 1 through 11. Uh, Steve, you got to dial me in a little bit. I'm going to start at verse 8, but again, we'll, I will focus on verse 11. For God is my witness, and we yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that, you may, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I'm going to read that two more times, and this is the second time. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory of, pray, um, to the glory of God. So last week we took a look at uh, uh, remember when and, and the power of affection uh, among the uh, a kingdom community among the people of God where we when we reminisce and we share together and we're we, we're just so deeply encouraged by that shared uh, affection. Um, we we also talked about what what true agape is. It's it's not emotion. It's it's more understanding. And, and, and that our understanding for one another and for the Lord might abound uh, more and more. And then we talked about, uh, finally, that in, in the shame, honor culture, the, the power of a community that's, that's tightly knit together, you know, to honor what, 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 what is pure and blameless and the power of, of, that, of that kind of that, that social cohesion to really uh, to shape everything. This morning, we're right at verse 11, where Paul writes, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So, so that love that, that we share together, that affection, that, that agape, that, that social power is all so, uh, so that we might bear the, what, what Paul calls the fruit of righteousness which gives glory to God. Now, as we as we take a look at that, what we need to be very, very, very clear about that the, the fruit of righteousness is, is is a corporate reality. It's a body life thing. Now, I, you know, all of us participate in in, in, that, in that quality of righteousness as the Lord moves in our hearts. But as Paul is envisioning it here in Philippians chapter one, he, he's talking about a uh, he, he's describing a a, a, a quality of the community. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself in love. We are to grow up into every way as the body of Christ. Uh, you know, it's, it's always good to remember 
that, that, that what the Lord is doing through us, he's doing through us as he shapes us to be a kingdom community, the very body of Christ, the visible manifestation of God uh, at work in the world. So as we think about this, this fruit of righteousness that the Lord produces in us together, we're, we're going to take a look at uh, four dimensions uh, of our experience where, um, where God moves. And the first has to do with, with justice. And, of course, in, in our day, you know, social justice is a, is, is a big theme that we're reading about in the papers and, and we see in the news all the time. Um, social justice is really an unfortunate phrase because all justice is social, right? All justice is social. And, and, to, and to slice that out is a little, it's a little disconcerting for me. Praise the Lord! <laughs> uh, you guys on Zoom, you hear it not like we hear it, though. Praise the Lord. All right. So justice. Anybody recognize that figure? Lady Justice, right? She, she you know, she's on the... Uh, on the Supreme Court uh, building, and and her name in Greek is DK, DK, which simply means justice. Okay, um, so when in Acts twenty eight four, when remember when Paul is bitten by the snake, when he's sitting at the fire, you know, and he shakes the snake off, and 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 the and the, and the crowd says, no doubt this man is a murderer, though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. And, and they have in mind this, this goddess, this goddess, DK, justice, you know, the scales of justice, balancing you know, right and wrong in, in the community. Well, the word that Paul uses everywhere, that Baba uses in, in, uh, in Greek is right here, dikaiosune, dikaiosune. And you see this D-I-K? See, see, see this connection here? Right? simply means righteousness or justice. So every time you read in the Bible and you read the word righteousness, and let me tell you, it is in the New Testament a lot. You could think justice. You, you could just as easily translate that as justice. Jesus died in order to bring, right, righteousness, Justice, this right way of being in the world uh, together, uh, a, 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 just a good way to think about that is healthy community. Healthy community. What, what justice is all about is, is healthy community where, where things work and people thrive. When, when we talk about what in the world is the Lord doing, we, we, we can take very, very seriously that what the Lord desires is justice throughout the land. If you're uncomfortable with the word justice, you could say righteousness throughout the land. But just understand it's the same word. It's the same concept. It's this notion of you know, everybody gets a fair deal. You know, everybody uh, you know, is minding their P's and Q's, you know, walking on the, you know, driving on the right side of the road. Uh, respecting one another, caring uh, for one another. That's what the Lord is up to. The turmoil we see in the nation is that a whole lot of people feel dramatically that they are not experiencing a healthy community. They're not experiencing the sense of justice. Okay? And consequently, when, you, when, when folks who don't experience justice, what you have is chaos and confusion and conflict. Okay? The closer we get to justice, right, the closer we get to peace. Okay? Peace. So in the book of Hebrews, we, we say this. We, we read this. For, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. All discipline seems painful. 
But over time, right, as the Lord works, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So when the Lord disciplines us as individuals, right, as the Lord disciplines a community or a nation, moving towards justice, that there might be peace. The most dramatic experience of this in, in, in our nation, of course, was the Civil War. You know, that, uh, that bloodletting. <clears throat> and there's that, there's that famous moment where President Lincoln was, was, was in his office and he was just, you know, scratching out, you know, out, out of thought. He just said, the Lord will, uh, the Civil War will not be finished until the Lord is done, until God is finished. And his secretary, his personal secretary, grabbed that slip of paper and it added it to uh, you know, Link, you know, Lincoln's documents. That's the only reason that, that we know that that's where Lincoln's head was at. Lincoln had a deep, deep sin that God was purifying the nation of the sin of slavery and that the bloodletting would not be over until that discipline was complete. And we're still, you know, experiencing that, that process, right? Justice brings peace. Now, anybody who's raised kids, more than one kid in the house, we understand that reality, don't we? Right? You've got, you know, five cookies and three kids, right? What do you do? Everybody gets one cookie. Right? And then you might try to slice them up because those kids understand. Right? Oh, man, they are supercharged. If they don't get their fair share of cookie, what do they say? It's not fair. And they're just sensitive to justice. Right? Because that's the way God created us, to live in a rightly ordered community. And every mom and dad who has ever lived Raising kids super sensitive to healthy community, justice in the home. Why? Because we want <laughs> we want to live in peace, right? Okay. So justice produces peace. Now watch this. Peace produces wisdom. Peace produces wisdom. What do I mean by that? It's in a peaceful environment that we are able to hear the Lord speak through one another to guide us and direct us. Okay. So I was on my walk uh, earlier this week. These purple signs are all over the trees in, in Alpine Forest. Okay. Absolutely no fireworks, $1,500 fines, report illegal fireworks to this number, right? Right? And I, and I just stopped and I looked at that sign, took a picture of that sign, and then I took a picture of this. <laughs> right? Right? Seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? Know what we're going to have in Alpine Forest on Saturday? Fireworks. There'll be one or two or three families who are going to do fireworks on the 4th of July. Do you know why? Because I'm an American. I have my rights and you can't tell me what to do. True story. Is that, is that going to happen or not? You know it's going to happen. Look at what, what the Lord says in Proverbs 2, 6 and 7. For the Lord gives wisdom. For his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, who listen, who seek a, an environment of peace in a land that, that, that is just, where there's a healthy community. So, so, so here's what's going on. This comes from Daniel Kahn, Kahneman's book, uh, thinking fast and slow. Two systems of, of thinking. You know, you know the first uh, first reactions, and it's fast thinking, fast, automatic, impulsive, 
little or no effort, emotional, it's easy, it's stress-free. It's, it's uh, fancy words are heuristics. Heuristics are like rules of thumb that govern our thinking, right? Presuppositions, uh, um, uh, unconscious biases, which, which lead us to make the, you know, to, to, to certain determinations without thinking it through. Now, we do this all the time, and we have to do this. If we didn't do this, we would be exhausted. We would never make it through the day because it would just be way too much to think about. And so what our personalities do, what our mind does is constantly creating these, these biases, these rules of thumb in order to maneuver us through the day. But sometimes it's important to slow down. So the father is going to do fireworks in Alpine Forest to entertain his kids on 4th of July because that's what his father did for them as an unconscious bias. You can't tell me what to do because I am an American. Never mind that Alpine Forest is one of the most risky places for wildfire in, uh, in Kern County. Right? Praise God, we, we've had little ones, but you know, hasn't, you know, hasn't gotten away. That's an unconscious bias. That's a trigger to, I can do what I want to do. Because I'm an American. Everybody recognize that? Praise God, everybody's wearing masks today. Right? You know where this is going. Okay? System two thinking is slower. It's deliberate. It's reflective. It's effortful. It's analytical. It's stressful. It takes time. It takes energy to slow down and ask the question, uh, what biases am I bringing into this decision? You know, what, 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 what kind of, of uh, you know, rules of thumb am, am, I, am I using to, to think this thing through? Or maybe this is something I ought to take the time to think through. System one, first reactions is fast. System two is, is slower and more stressful. And gang, we are living in a time where, oh baby, do we need wisdom. Do we need to hear from the Lord? Do we need to hear from one another? Do we need to hear from folks who have the resources and the responsibility to think things through? Right? But we don't have the time and inclination to do that. So the... I'm going to skip this. Peace brings wisdom. When you don't have peace, okay, what we have is a politicized environment. Where wisdom is hindered. Because we've all taken sides and we're all applying our unconscious biases that uh, 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 to, you know, to, to different issues. And that's where we are. We need to seek the Lord's peace in a healthy community in order to hear his wisdom, in order to act appropriately. Amen? You guys with me? I mean, you guys see how that works? Okay. Now, what's the result of wisdom? Watch this. The result is abundance. Right? Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 6, this is the promise of, of abundance in, in the, at the end of Deuteronomy. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord. And, okay, Brian, what's that word? Shema. If we hear the voice of the Lord by His Spirit through one another in the Scripture. If you will faithfully hear the voice of the Lord 
your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you will hear, obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flocks. Blessed shall you be, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The word for that is abundance. In fact, Jesus said, right, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Now, we have, what we need to realize that this is not magic. It's not magic. Where does, the God, where does God's abundance come from? Wisdom. When we shut up and listen, when we slow down and listen and do what he says, we listen to him best where there's peace, where things aren't politicized and we're not amped up and they're able to calm down and hear him speak. A healthy community that is just produces the peace that creates the wisdom that produces abundance. You know the greatest threat to America right now? Do you reckon, do you understand the greatest threat? It's not COVID-19. It's not even racial inequality. The greatest threat to America right now is everybody doing their own thing because I'm American and you, don't, and you can't tell me what to do. Nothing will kill the American economy faster than people ignoring the wisdom of those who understand and are speaking into our culture. Wearing masks everywhere you go, right? Don't wear a mask. You know what's going to happen? Hospitals are going to get overwhelmed with COVID-19 patients, and the governor is going to shut down the state again. Right now, real fast, more people will be thrown out of work. And abundance will disappear. Right now. The fruits of righteousness to the glory of God. When we hear his voice, we do what he says. And, and, and we work at all these four dimensions all the time. You know, healthy community. You know, a, a just world. Working it all the time, all the time, moving closer and closer to, to authentic kingdom community. You know, working for peace all the time, not getting ramp, amped up, right? Not speaking, you know, craziness or, 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 or foolishness. You know, inviting uh, the peace of the Holy Spirit to, you know, to fill this place. You know, seeking wisdom at every point. Make an effort to do the hard, stressful thing of thinking critically, of not believing everything you read or hear. Right? And you know what the Lord will do? He will bring his abundance to our faithfulness. Can you bow your hearts and heads with me? Lord God, we do rejoice in just the goodness. Lord, the goodness of, of who you are in this for this beautiful world that you've created us to live in. And Lord, I, I am absolutely convinced, we're all convinced, that uh, that this COVID-19 is here because you are, you are disciplining us. Lord, you're calling us to come back to you and to listen to you more deeply. Lord, to, to, uh, Lord, to, to enter into your, uh, your, your peace. Lord, to, to hear you you speak. 
Lord, that more and more and more this land might be the just land, the righteous land that you intend all along. Lord, I, I, I do believe of all the places of the earth, Lord, uh, uh, America, the United States of America is uniquely positioned, Lord, to, to bring great blessing to all of the world. And Lord, in order for us to do that, for you to do that through us, Lord, we need to be a righteous nation, a nation that is just. Lord, rule among us for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yep. If you forgot to uh, come up during the song, thank you, Bill. Come, come up and do it right now. But go from this place, filled with his presence, filled with his power, and serve him for his glory, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you.